This is a moist, jelly-like hydrogen solar cell, and it achieves something that has remained theoretical for over 100 years. When sunlight hits this strange cell, it doesn't generate electricity like conventional solar cells. Instead, it produces ultra-pure hydrogen, and it does so eight times more efficiently than any known alternative. The code has been cracked. No electrolysis, no massive complex hydrogen production plant with multi-million dollar construction costs. This cell is simple, practical, and cheap. The system was invented by a Swedish research team at Linköping University. Leading the project is Professor Jianwu Sun, who sees the cell as a potential alternative to batteries and conventional accumulators on a massive scale. But without even realizing it, the Swedish researchers have fulfilled the dream of a long-forgotten chemist, a man once nominated multiple times for the Nobel Prize, but who lived in the shadow of Albert Einstein, a man who could have gone down in history as a visionary, but instead was forgotten. In 1912, a publication appeared in a science magazine that still exists today. It stood out from the rest. It was a paper by the chemist Giacomo Luigi Chemichin. In it, he shared a vision in which his obscure field of study, photochemistry, would one day dominate the future of industry. Siamishin was obsessed with the idea of developing artificial photosynthesis. His goal was to produce chemical energy carriers like diesel, gasoline, and hydrogen directly from light. But all of his experiments failed. And not only that, his research, his vision, and his ideas were largely ignored. Why? Fossil fuels were abundant, and the demand for alternatives was close to zero. At that time, another idea seemed far more relevant, a similar approach, but instead of producing chemical energy, it aimed to produce electrical energy from light, photovoltaics. That was the field Einstein was working in, and it ultimately won him the Nobel Prize. Siamishin died without seeing any hope that his field would ever gain practical relevance. But now, 100 years later, things are changing. Professor Jianwu Sun and his team at Linköping University have identified weaknesses in photovoltaics, weaknesses that photochemistry simply doesn't have. Let's talk numbers. 100 kilowatt hours of energy in the form of diesel weighs about 8.5 kilograms, but to store the same amount using the most energy-dense lithium battery tech, NMC, you'd need a battery weighing 660 to 700 kilograms. That's a huge difference. Ships, construction machinery, airplanes, they all need energy solutions that are light. Every kilogram adds cost. In these areas, relying on batteries and photovoltaics is either impossible or economically unfeasible. That's the assessment of the Swedish research team. And there's another well-known problem with solar power. What do you do with all the excess electricity? In summer, solar panels generate more energy than needed. In winter, they don't produce enough. The public grid is supposed to balance this out, but it now causes cost in the billions. Batteries can reduce the problem but not solve it. The longer you want to store energy, the more disproportionately expensive battery storage becomes for both individuals and governments. So even today, in an era of affordable solar power, chemical energy carriers are scientifically proven to be superior when it comes to energy density and long-term storage. Anyone who can find a way to make chemical energy carriers like hydrogen as easily producible from sunlight as electricity is from photovoltaic cells could trigger a revolution in the energy sector. And that's exactly what Professor John Wu Sun and his team have achieved 100 years after Kiamishin's dream. But how does it work? How can light split water into hydrogen and oxygen? Before we get to the tech, a quick note. The problem of solar energy oversupply is becoming visible even to the public. Feed-in tariffs have been falling for years and there are discussions in politics about abolishing them entirely. There is, however, a way to gain more independence from these issues. Systems like Enpal offer smart solutions where surplus solar power is sold directly using intelligent algorithms. Under the right conditions, this can bring in two to three times more revenue than traditional feed-in models. But back to the hydrogen solar cell. What's so surprising here is that many people underestimate how stable a water molecule actually is. In fact, splitting water using sunlight should be nearly impossible. Most water molecules on Earth are as old as the Earth itself. They've survived sunlight and cosmic radiation for over 3.6 billion years. So how can a small cell break that bond using just sunlight in a matter of seconds? A first answer came in 1972 from Japanese researchers. The Honda Fujishima cell became famous and opened up new fields of research. The key idea was that while light can't split water directly, it can trigger a chain reaction that creates a water-splitting environment inside the cell. When ultraviolet light hits titanium dioxide, 
it excites the electrons in the atoms to a high energy state. What happens next is strange. The electrons leave their original place, creating positively charged holes. These charge carriers, the excited electron and the hole, are separated by the light. And while only the electron is a real particle, the hole behaves like one too. It can move around like a positive particle. In physics, this is called a quasi-particle. This environment with electrons and holes can trigger redox reactions that split water, but the amounts generated were extremely small. The Japanese researchers showed that photocatalytic water splitting using light was theoretically possible, but not efficient. Why? Because the electron hole pairs tend to reunite very quickly. The chance they'll split water before recombining is tiny. So the overall efficiency of the system was close to zero. That's the breakthrough that Professor Jianwu Sun and his team have now achieved. Their solution? A three-layer cell structure that keeps electrons and holes separate. At the base is cubic silicon carbide, a semiconductor that absorbs sunlight efficiently and enables the formation of electron hole pairs. It replaces the titanium dioxide used by the Japanese team. But the real innovation is in the two additional layers, cobalt oxide and nickel hydroxide. These materials guide the electrons and holes in opposite directions, keeping them spatially separated. This prevents recombination and allows water splitting to proceed efficiently. Thanks to this structure, the team managed to increase the efficiency of hydrogen production by a factor of 8. And the system isn't even fully optimized yet. There's still room for improvement. The principle of keeping holes and electrons apart could be enhanced further with other materials. Of course, this is still basic research, but Professor Jianwu Sun and his team believe that market-ready systems could be just 5 to 10 years away. That might sound distant, but in scientific terms, it's a massive leap. Let's not forget, this field of research is 110 years old. And for the past 50 years, progress and efficiency has been minimal. And this recent breakthrough by the Swedish team is highly significant. It could become the foundation for the first commercially viable hydrogen-producing solar cell in the world.